Hi, this is John Pistotnik. My wife Cindy and I recently returned from a trip to Japan to visit our daughter. Toilets and their associated signage were an essential and memorable part of our trip. These are my observations. Toilet technology in Japan is a trichotomy ranging from primitive to utilitarian to high technology. The toilet on the left is the traditional eastern squat toilet, albeit outfitted for handicapped accessibility. The eco-ingenious toilet in the middle is basic, but equipped with a basin sink so you can rinse your hands using water that then refills the toilet tank. The toilet on the right demonstrates the latest in toilet technology with features such as heat, sounds, inspirational flowing water, and a variety of sprays. Yes, the Japanese are obsessed with the toilet sciences. In Sapporo, we discovered decorative manhole lids and reference to their Sewerage and Rivers Bureau and their famous Sapporo Sewerage Science Museum. As Suzanne Smith aptly noted, that is one museum gift shop I might choose to avoid. Let's face it, Sapporo is so toilet and sewage centered that it has pee pee in its name. I've added the word sewerage to my vocabulary and try to use it at least once a day in conversation. This is one of the more interesting restroom signs that Cindy picked up on at the Dick Museum of Art. Okay, first and foremost, don't Google the term Dick Museum. Nothing good comes of that. Secondly, what does this sign depict, especially the vertical line? Is it a squat toilet, an appendage, human output, or a warning that a snake could come up through the plumbing? My first thoughts were squat toilet or horseback riding. I thought the art could represent squatting, a dress, or a cone of silence. Cindy confirmed that the associated restroom did not have a squat toilet. Perhaps this sign is intended to be thought-provoking. It certainly was. Japan is a house divided when it comes to toilet technology and techniques. One faction believes in squatters' rights. These traditionalists feel their right to squat is being infringed as Western toilets gain popularity. The JCLU has taken up their cause as the progressive bowel movement, on the other hand, is all about discarding the past and moving forward with technology and hygiene. Whether your toilet cause is number one or number two, the urgency to take action is real. A wise plumber once said there are two simple rules of plumbing. Ship flows downhill and payday is on Friday. In Japan, plumbing, like toilet seat selection, is somewhat more complicated than that. These high-end toilet seats, ranging in price from $2,000 to more than $4,000, provide a daunting array of features involving temperature, sound, spray, flow, and who knows what else. Believe me, the test drive is a little more than awkward. Another fun fact, the word gullible does not appear in the American Dictionary. Look it up! Playing with the buttons when there is no English translation is a bit like playing Russian Roulette. One very important lesson, however, is that once you press a button that causes water to spray, it will not stop automatically. The only way to get it to stop is to press the off button. An important corollary is do not stand up while you try to find the off button. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well, you get the picture. While all three of the buttons shown apparently spray you into the air, some buttons appear to be gender neutral, others are apparently for ladies only. Perhaps inclusive of men's sporting cues, like David Carradine in Kung Fu. It's nice that toilet controls feature Braille. I'm curious why not all the buttons include Braille, though. Perhaps they control features that only sighted individuals can appreciate. Features such as bowl illumination and image projection, perhaps. Cindy encountered several toilets featuring a sound option. 
I imagine these include sounds of encouragement, such as running water, and or sounds to drown out the indiscreet sounds of bodily functions being performed. Apparently, this one features the band Toto. This one sign is the holy grail of bathroom signage. There is so much great content that I've broken it down into its component parts for analysis and critique. First, it is so Japanese in its friendly, non-confrontational tone. Let's use facing the front. Its liberal use of spaces after apostrophes is also notable. Okay, the picture on the left is clearly targeted to those accustomed to squat toilets. Fair enough. Safety first. The picture on the right, however, can only be targeted to trick rodeo riders. This thought has never crossed my mind before, but now I can't stop thinking about it. I'm going to have to try that. Apparently side saddle is acceptable since there seem to be no prohibition against it. I get it. In many cities slash countries, the plumbing can't handle toilet paper and it must be discarded in a waste can. But do you really need to stand up to drop the toilet paper in the toilet? You may want to shut off the bidet first. Okay, sorry to everyone doing number two. You'll have to dig it out of the toilet and pack it out with you. Only toilet paper gets flushed in this commode. For those doing number one, well, just leave quickly without flushing. Finally, it has to be asked, why is this sign in English? It seems like English speakers are unequivocally the least likely to need any of these instructions. We saw signs on the train about rude and unacceptable behavior that were only in English and Chinese. Okay, I get that. We may be rude and obnoxious, but we sure as hell know how to use a Western toilet. I'm not sure what the future of Japanese toiletry will bring, but I'm betting on something olfactory if it doesn't already exist. As we wrap up, I need to extend the following thanks and apologies. Don't miss our next exposition on baby hanging. See you then.